For more than a hundred years, coal mining has contoured the landscape of the Elk Valley. But the movement of all that rock has created long-term problems. Throughout the valley's watershed, levels of selenium pollution are 50 to 70 times what is considered safe. Scientists say these massive piles of exposed waste rock will continue to release selenium pollution for hundreds of years. And that's causing tensions downstream, where U.S. officials are raising the alarm over BC's quiet water contamination crisis. We share a really remarkable border with Canada, one of the longest peaceful borders in the world. And there's something really special, I think, about that relationship. It goes back a long ways. We're talking centuries. And at this point, when we talk about the pollution in the Elk Kootenai system that crosses that border, we're also talking centuries. Canada and the U.S. have a treaty in place to protect transboundary waters from pollution. So the situation in the Elk Valley is creating some significant international tension. U.S. commissioners recently raised concerns that Canada is suppressing science about Elk Valley pollution, while using reports that lack accurate and available information about the health impacts from selenium in the shared watershed. In the U.S., you would never get new permits if you're currently exceeding your permit levels. I don't know, somewhere in between denial and anger and loyalty and worldview, these become really hard conversations to have. It's my home, it's where I live. It's, it's immediately upstream from where I drink. Some of Canada's largest mines are located in the Elk Valley. Massive open pits created through an intense mining process known as mountaintop removal. Due to the mines and the enormous amount of waste rock they create, elevated levels of sulfates, nitrates, and cadmium have all been detected in the valley's water. But it's the growing level of selenium that is causing serious alarm. The Elk Valley's five steel-making coal mines span an area roughly 100 kilometers long, and all of the mines are owned by one influential company, Tech Resources. Lars Sander Green works with the local environmental organization WildSight that for years has been calling attention to selenium pollution and its effects on local wildlife populations. You've got this really slow moving water and so the sediments are going to settle out and what you end up with is West Slope cutthroat trout with pretty significant concentrations of selenium in their flesh and in their eggs and in the ovaries. Two waterways in the Elk Valley have been found to contain levels of selenium dangerous to bugs, fish, and birds. Selenium is a naturally occurring element that is actually essential to human health. But exposure to high levels of selenium can lead to nerve damage, even death. And in fish, selenium can cause birth defects and reproductive failure. The tourism economy is definitely fly fishing. Uh, that's a huge part. There's a lot of people that come here to go fly fishing and experience uh, this river. For someone who's like never fished and they don't know what this fish is, like what? what Mother what Nature engineered it to eat dry flies. <laughs> you know, the thing's just looking up always. The more I explore with clients and by myself, the more I do see a few deformities on a weekly basis probably. You know, missing gill plates and stuff like that. I don't think it's talked about a lot. You could easily go fly fishing for a week and not see that issue. And maybe not know that there's mining in the area. Totally, absolutely right. It's, it's well disguised, yeah. 
<laughs> Donnie said, go stand on the log. And I was like, yeah, that looks super slippery. Yellow tree just to the left of the Yeah, down. right by that red bush. That's a fish catching spot? That's where we're going to catch fish. Oh, let's go there. OK. Let's do it. The clear cut logging that we see uh, you know, on the hillsides, that's a lot more in people's face. But this selenium issue is, you know, it's silent. It's, uh, and it, it is much, much bigger of an issue to the health of this watershed. Oh, oh, there's one on there. <laughs> yeah, the lazy sipper. <laughs> okay, the pressure's off now. <laughs> BC's water quality guidelines say that in order to keep aquatic life safe, Selenium pollution should be kept down to two parts per billion. For drinking water, the province recommends selenium levels stay below 10 parts per billion. But all around the Elk Valley, water testing has found selenium levels at 50, 70, and in some cases, higher than 100 parts per billion. Impacts from mining in the Elk Valley are especially interesting to University of Montana scientist Aaron Sexton, who for years has been studying the differences between the Elk Valley and the valley next door, the Flathead. We came up to uh, the Elk River in BC from Montana in the early 2000s to collect data. We were surprised by what we found. We expected a mine impacted system, but the Elk is a heavily mine impacted system. The issue with selenium is that it's what we call biphasic, meaning that it goes from good for you to toxic in a really tiny window. Concerns about the impacts of selenium pollution in the Elk Valley have been raised since the 90s, but it was in 2014 that an expert report prepared for Environment Canada warned that selenium pollution was negatively impacting fish. The report warned that increases in selenium pollution would lead to a total population collapse of sensitive species like the West Slope cutthroat trout. But now there's a whole new concern brewing when it comes to selenium in the Elk Valley. And that's the contamination of drinking water. They test this well regularly, and it, it is showing it hasn't exceeded the minimum yet, but it's definitely close. It was, it's one of the higher ones um, up until those ones in Sparwood that, uh, that surpassed that. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Good. Uh, we're just kind of going door to door chatting with people about the coal dust issue. issue. Would you be? No. Okay. Thanks. Spyroid is one of the towns where they've actually had selenium contamination of drinking water, and the company is, you know, working to uh, address that issue. And we kind of want to talk to the people who live here about that, and no one wants to talk to us because everyone says they work at the mine and they'll lose their job, there'll be consequences. So, tough gig today. We're gonna keep trying. They say my husband works at the mine, or I work at the mine. You, they're I, scared. I, I'll get in trouble. There's a lot of people that won't come here because they're scared of losing their jobs. Well, yeah. I lost my job in 92 when the uh, mines went bankrupt after 20, I was there 25 years. You know, are you worried about the water contamination? Oh, oh for sure. Like my, my husband was an avid fly fisher. All his, his favorite fishing holes world were all contaminated. World star! You know? Yeah. <laughs> You're a world star. <laughs> <laughs> Selenium contamination isn't a concern just in BC, though. The entire Elk Valley watershed drains into the Kukanusa Reservoir, a massive body of water shared with Montana to the south. Basically, the water quality issues that you're seeing in Kukanusa right here, as soon as it's mixed, the Elk River water is mixed with the Kootenai water, it's going to be pretty similar most of the way down. And so we're going to be doing some um, filming of you and other folks doing water testing, where, where is that going to be taking place? Well, it's basically just far enough downstream to ensure that it's well mixed into the Kootenai River. It's right about there. Send it back to the lab with the duplicate and then um, 
and see what we get back. Great. Is um, Team Dog coming with us? <laughs> Are you going to come with us? I'm going to take a sample of you home. Researchers and local environmental organizations say that while the BC government and tech conduct regular water sampling, they don't share the raw data with the public and don't test in important spots year-round. So Sexton, along with a group from both BC and Montana, is beginning to conduct independent water testing. So we uh we sort of slid back down the mountain and decided to get out and, and hike. And uh, now we're just following these grizzly tracks up the mountain to get a good view of the mine. There are three new mines currently being proposed for the Elk Valley. All current mining in the area is permitted under a water quality plan that requires selenium levels to stabilize over the next five years. Tech's first water quality treatment plant came online in 2014, but since then has been plagued with problems, including a significant fish kill in its first six months of operation, and it was taken offline in 2017. Even though Tech says it's now ready to bring that plant back online, Critics say that the setbacks raise questions about the company's technology and whether or not it can in reality lower selenium levels. You know, the company comes and says, well, we're gonna build this water treatment plant and it's, and it's gonna fix everything. Who's gonna run it in 500 years or in 850 years? I mean, tech's not gonna be here running that water treatment plant. Despite growing concerns over selenium in the Elk Valley and persistent violations of BC's water quality guidelines, coal mining operations continue unabated 24-7, 365 days a year. Whilst there might be setbacks in one particular area, albeit a, a very important area, which is the treatment technology, I think we need to continue to you know, plug on and move forward to make this plan work. I don't really blame tech. I think they're doing exactly what you would expect a company to do. But it is the regulator's job to have the communities back, and it's completely failed. The BC Ministry of Environment says that while tech is far from meeting provincial levels for selenium, the limits are guidelines, not law. Read more on the Narwhal.